Hi guys, in this video, we will have a look at the various chapter summaries of SPUD by John van der Rijt. In January 1990, we see John Milton leaving home and going to a fancy boarding school. His family is not wealthy and they come across as embarrassing and crazy. John, or SPUD, appears to be out of place as he arrives at the boarding school he is surrounded by students from wealthy families. His family embarrasses him the entire time they are at the school. The school categorizes learners as year 1 to year 3, matrix and then post matrix, almost like grades. There are seven houses that we are aware of. Every house has four prefects and a head of house. John, or Spud, is placed into a dormitory with eight other boys who all appear to be unique and strange characters. An African prefect, PJ Latuli, is head of the house in which Spud stays. The prefects manage the house and constantly give orders to all the boys. At the boarding school, most of the boys are addressed by their nicknames. No one knows where or how they get their nicknames. The older boys mislead the new boys and give them incorrect information as a form of initiation. The housemaster, Mr. Wilson, makes the seven commandments of the house known. Commandment number one, thou shalt not disobey those in authority. Number two, thou shalt not behave in a depraved fashion. Number three, thou shalt not tease my cat. Number 4. Thou shalt not waste toilet paper. Number 5. Thou shalt not play with yourself or others after lights out. Number 6. Thou shalt not go night swimming. Number 7. Thou shalt not play darts. Spud is homesick and worries about when the boys in his dorm will pick on him. Vern wets the bed and Gecko, who is squeamish, are likely to get bullied first. Spud constantly gets lost around the large school grounds. Mad Dog causes Spud to be late for maths class and Spud is punished by Mr. Sykes. He is forced to clean the staff toilets with an old underpants. During compulsory touch rugby, Gecko was tackled by Mad Dog and his arm broke. Gecko was sent to the school sanatorium which is a sick room in a boarding school. Mad Dog nearly got expelled after only three days of being at the school. Instead of being expelled, he was given a warning and forced to write an apology letter to Gecko's parents. During cricket trials, Spud realizes that the school is making him a coward. Mad Dog asks Spud to help him write the apology letter to Gecko's parents. The boys in the dormitory bully Vern. Spud feels bad for not standing up to them. Vern causes a disruption in the cafeteria which results in a teacher banning condiments for two days. Fatty is furious. Spud discovers that there is a poet with the same name as him. The Gov told him about it. Spud makes it into the under 14A cricket team. Simon is made captain. Mad Dog is also in the team, but Rambo is placed in the B team. Spud's mom tells him that his dad was arrested for indecent exposure. He was caught naked in the neighbor's garden at 3 in the morning. Mad Dog lures Spud into a storeroom. Out of fear, Spud joins him and eats the cooked rock pigeon Mad Dog caught. The under 14A cricket team plays their first match against Westwood College. The boys win the match because of Spud. There is a full school communion service and afterwards the boys are told to leave school for the afternoon and explore the surrounding areas. They end up at a dam and have a mud fight. Vern injures someone by throwing mud in their eye. Gecko returns from the sanatorium just to be injured by Mad Dog again. The Year Ones are addressed by the prefects and are told that their grace week is over 
and that they are now vulnerable to being bullied by the older boys in the school. The year ones will also be assigned to a prefect as a personal slave. Spud is assigned to Grant Edwards, nicknamed Earthworm. Choir additions happen, and they are compulsory to all year ones. Spud is chosen for the choir and is placed in the treble section. Rambo plans an illegal night swim on Friday and forces the boys in his dorm to join him. The boys sneak out of the school grounds and head towards the dam where they go night swimming. Security guards and their dogs approach the dam and the boys rush back towards the school for safety. Once the boys are safe in their beds, they retell the experiences they had while being chased by the guard dogs. They then realize that Fatty is missing and after searching, they discover that he is stuck in the chapel window. They cannot free him and are forced to report it to Lutuli, who then reports it to Mr. Wilson. The whole school sees Fatty's bum dangling from the chapel window and the Glock is upset. The fire brigade arrives on the scene to set Fatty free. Rambo saves the boys from being caught and punished by lying to the reverend, the Glock and Spare Rib, saying that Fatty had a spiritual encounter and that is why he was in the chapel during the night. The reverend forces Fatty to testify of his encounter during an evening chapel service. Vern, nicknamed Rain Man, has disappeared. No one knows where he is. Gecko has returned to the sanatorium for an infected wound that he obtained while on the night swim excursion. Spud builds a relationship with the Gov. They have lunch at his house. February 1990. We have a look at the country's politics. Nelson Mandela is going to be set free and the ANC is going to be unbanned. Vern, or Rain Man, is still missing. The police came to the school to investigate his disappearance. Strange things happen. Vern's belongings start disappearing, his torch, pillows and duvet cover. Latuli overhears Spud telling the boys and reports it to Mr. Wilson. Vern is found. He had been living under the crypt and scavenging food from the rubbish dump for nine days. Vern is sent home to his mother. Spud receives a new book from the Gov, Catch-22. They have lunch together every Monday. Spud's dad fired Innocence and now she has gone to the Labour Court to sue him for unfair dismissal. Spud's cricket team won against the Arlington team. His parents only arrived after the match. Pike bullies Simon, sets him on fire. Rambo and Mad Dog plan their revenge. Auditions for the school play Oliver are taking place. Spud auditions for the play and messes it up. He feels defeated and awful afterwards. Fatty has been investigating a story of an English teacher named MacArthur who hung himself in the school's chapel in the year 1944. Spud returns to his family in Durban for the long weekend. His mom hosts a book club meeting at their house and this is when Spud meets a girl named Debbie, nicknamed Mermaid, and is awestruck by her beauty. Spud and Mermaid swim together and he tries to impress her but instead embarrasses himself. Spud realizes that he has a crush on Mermaid. Innocence returns to the Milton's home as an employee. The law was on her side. Spud is glad that she is back. The family visits Wombat for lunch. Spud's dad continues his crazy antics and sets himself on fire. Spud returns to school. The boys stay up talking after lights out. Sparrow catches them in the act and informs them that Vern will be returning to school. Mr. Crispo, the history teacher, announces his retirement. Rambo plans another night swim and pressures the boys into agreeing. There are Oliver edition callbacks. Spud is called back and manages to prove himself through his singing. 
Rambo fought with the school bully, De Fris, and punched him until he was unconscious. Latuli wants the feud to end. The boys went for an uneventful night swim, and upon returning to their dorm, they were ambushed by Latuli and the prefects who had been waiting for their return. The boys were busted. None of the boys were able to sleep, as they all dreaded the inevitable punishment that awaited them. Tension amongst the boys caused a fight to break out. Rambo punched Fatty's face. Mad Dog charged and attacked Rambo, who then bit a chunk of flesh out of Mad Dog's shoulder. Latuli reported the boys to Spare Rib. The boys made peace with each other and accepted the fact that they would get thrashed by Spare Rib. The boys were all beaten by Spare Rib, and this united them once again. March 1990 Spud has been called back for the Oliver editions. Spud's relationship with the Gov grows. Spud receives a letter from the mermaid. The second years attack the boys with pillows. Gecko is injured in the process, when a pillow hits one of the light bulbs and shattered glass goes flying. Spud discovers that he and the boys in his dorm are known as the Crazy Eight. Fatty makes a breakthrough in the MacArthur case, the teacher who committed suicide on the school property in 1944. Mr. Crispo was working at the school when all this took place. Spud is elected to question him about it. Rambo tricks Spud into asking a matric boy named Greg Anderson about his sister's running abilities. The matric boy violently attacks Spud and says that his sister was in a car accident and lost both her legs a month ago. Spud tries to apologize to Anderson as he feels very bad about what happened. It turns out Anderson did not actually have a sister. Spud's dad accidentally drove over the neighbor's dog, which then died. The neighbors think he did it on purpose. Spud goes for lunch at the Gov's house. He also goes to Mr. Crispo's house for the MacArthur case. Crispo tells Spud war stories and reveals that he was not at school when MacArthur committed suicide. He asks Spud to visit him again soon. Spud's cricket team remains unbeaten in the past season. Gecko and Vern try to break into the biology lab and get caught. They are beaten. Vern appears to be a rebel, and the Crazy Eight decide not to call him Rain Man anymore. The Crazy Eight have breakfast with the Glock. This is a tradition where all the first years have breakfast with the headmaster of the school. Spud lands the role as Oliver. It is the school holidays, and Spud goes home to be with his family. Mermaid and her mother visit the Miltons. When she arrives, Spud is so nervous that he blows his chance at kissing the mermaid. The Miltons go on a trip to Namibia, where they will stay with relatives, Uncle Aubrey and Aunt Peggy. Wombat, Spud's senile granny, joins them. After days of travelling, Spud's father gets denied entry into Namibia, due to a pending criminal record. His father then bribes an official and they are let through the border. Uncle Aubrey and Spud's dad take him on a hunting trip. They return and find everyone up in arms because Wombat's suitcase is missing. Spud's dad used it to bribe the officials at the border. No one is speaking to him anymore except Spud. Spud's father makes peace with everyone and they enjoy some family time together. April 1990 Wombat is missing. They call the police and Spud's mom is panicking. Spud does some detective work and finds out where she is, at a hotel booked into the honeymoon suite. The Miltons leave Namibia and start the journey back home. Spud's dad is part of the neighborhood watch and manages to assault and intimidate innocent people. Spud's parents get into a big fight and Spud's father packs his things and declares that he is moving out, then leaves on foot. Spud goes on a first date with the mermaid. They watch the movie Ghost at the cinema. The date goes really well and they kiss for the first time. 
Mermaid is now Spud's official girlfriend. Spud's father returns home and apologizes. Viking phones Spud and tells him not to cut his hair and that he should consider dyeing his hair blonde for the upcoming play in preparation for his Oliver performance. Spud returns to school as the holidays come to an end. The Gov looks depressed. Spud tries to speak to him, but the Gov is not interested in the interaction. The Oliver rehearsals begin. Spud is excited. Someone pranked the Crazy Eight and put all of their beds on the roof while it was raining. They had to replace their soaking mattresses. It is Spud's 14th birthday. This is on the 20th of April 1990. The Gov gives him a gift. The Crazy Eight and a few other boys ambush and attack Spud. They drag him out the dorm and into the bog area and apply shoe polish with a hard bristle brush to his groin area. Rugby Trials It is compulsory for all first years to play rugby. Spud manages to earn a place on the under-14 D team. The Gov reveals to Spud that his wife had left him and moved out during the holidays. Mr. Crispo has passed away and Spud does not take this news well. The Glock summons Spud and wants to speak to him. Mr. Crispo's dying wish was for Spud to sing a song at his funeral service and Spud agrees to do it. Spud plays his first rugby match against Lincoln School. The first team wins their match 28-3. All first years are required to go on an intensive hike up mountain in Lazane. It is a long and painful hike, but the view at the top of the mountain is breathtaking. May 1990. Mr. Crispo's funeral service takes place and Spud sings. A new history teacher arrives to replace Mr. Crispo. His name is Mr. Lennox. Spud does extremely well during the Oliver rehearsals and grabs the attention of the Glock. This causes Pike and DeFris to bully him. Earthworm, Spud's prefect, catches them and saves Spud. The school hosts a junior social for the first and second years, and St. Catherine's girls come to the social. Spud eyes a beautiful red-haired girl but does not manage to speak to her. Spud attends the political society meeting and leaves inspired. The Crazy Eight, except Fatty, realize that their underpants are disappearing. They report it to the prefects. Rambo forces the Crazy Eight to raid the kitchen and steal food. They take a large amount of food to their dorm. They eat all the food so that there is no evidence. Spud's diary is stolen by Bogo. He read it and put an excerpt of it on the notice board for everyone to see. Spud is humiliated and regrets writing in a diary. Spud discovers that his friend, Jeff Lawson, is the grandson of MacArthur and informs Fatty of his discovery. Mermaid is severely depressed because of her parents' divorce and is on antidepressants. The female cast of Oliver arrives at the school for their first rehearsal. Turns out the red-haired girl Spud was crushing on at the junior social, Amanda Lawrence, was the female lead actress who was to act as Bette in the play. He thinks she is more beautiful than life itself. This causes him to feel extremely guilty when he thinks of Mermaid. Spud asks Jeff about his great-grandfather and discovers that Jeff has no idea about the suicide. Fatty breaks the school record for the longest fart, 33 seconds long. Spud goes home for the long weekend. He visits Mermaid and barely recognizes her. She is thin, pale and looks sickly from the depression. Spud discovers that his father has been begging for money from strangers in shopping centers in order to afford sending him on an expensive cricket tour in Cape Town. Spud visits Mermaid again and manages to get a giggle out of her. When he leaves, she starts crying hysterically. Spud discovers that Innocence is selling booze from her room in their yard. He decides not to tell his parents. 
June 1990. Vern is acting strange and disappears every night, Spud tells Earthworm. The under-14D rugby team gets demoted to under-14E. They are horrible at playing rugby, but they win their first ever match as the new under-14E team. The boys prank Mad Dog by carrying him while he snores on his mattress down to the middle of the quad and leave him there overnight. Vern bursts into the dormitory in a frantic panic. He says he saw the MacArthur ghost. Spud thinks he might have fallen out of love with Mermaid and in love with Amanda. Rambo admits to having sexual relations with Eve, the drama teacher. Spud is very ill with chronic bronchitis and woke up in the sanatorium. Gecko contracts a rare form of bilharzia and joins Spud in the sanatorium. They spend their time chatting with one another. Spud realizes that Gecko is a strong person and gains a deep respect for him. Gecko reveals that he loves Spud's singing. Spud wakes up one day to see a love letter next to his sand bed left by Amanda. He is released from the sand and sent back to school. Amanda is friendly with Spud and they have a conversation at rehearsals. The, the bond between Spud and Gecko grow. Gecko asks him to sing at his funeral one day. A rumor goes around that Spud and Gecko are homosexuals. They ignore it. The under 14E team has been promoted back to under 14D. Spud's father manages to collect enough money for Spud to go on that fancy cricket tour to Cape Town. July 1990. The cricket team leaves by bus and journeys to Cape Town. The team arrives at their destination and immediately intimidates the other teams there. It rains constantly and the fields become waterlogged. Matches get cancelled due to the weather. The team enjoys the trip and even get drunk while going to several wine tasting farms. They begin the journey back to their school. Spud's father fetches him from school and takes him home for the holidays. Spud goes to visit Mermaid, who appears to be a zombie. Her mother is sending her to England to visit her aunt, as was recommended by the psychiatrist. Wombat is going to have an eye operation to remove the cataracts in her eyes. Spud wonders if this is the end of his relationship with Mermaid. Gecko is visiting family in Durban and phones Spud to ask him if he wants to go to the beach together. Gecko picks him up in a black Mercedes driven by a personal chauffeur. They enjoy time at the beach together and try to flirt with girls. They fail at this. Wombat's operation is successful with no complications. Spud and his father go on a fishing trip. It is a complete disaster and the station wagon gets wrecked. It begins to rain and the fishing trip comes to an end. They head back home and Spud's dad needs a tetanus shot after the eventful fishing trip. The holidays come to an end as Spud returns to school. The Glock informs the boys that the third term is called the silly season and that someone always gets expelled. The first Oliver rehearsal of the term is horrible. Viking and Kojak take turns shouting at the students. The Gov's wife has returned and he is back to his normal self. Jeff Lawson's parents told him about his grandfather's suicide but don't have any exciting information about it. Spud realizes he might be developing feelings for Amanda. August 1990 It is Rambo's birthday and the boys make sure to initiate him by throwing him into the fish pond. Spud's father catches Innocence in the act of selling booze and is deciding what to do with her. Mermaid writes Spud a love letter in which she tells him that she feels much better and that he is her boyfriend. Spud is confused about his feelings. He likes both Mermaid and Amanda. Spud goes to see the school counsellor as he fears he might be having a nervous breakdown. Spud's dad makes a deal with Innocence in which she must give him 20 cents for every bottle that she sells. Spud confides in Gecko about his relationship troubles and Gecko gives him good advice. 
Vern is revealed as the underpants thief. Rambo and Pike agree that Vern should be destroyed or maimed. Vern is being protected by Latuli and the teachers. The crazy eight sneak out at midnight and Bogo tricks them into smoking Daha. Spud and Gecko go on a trip while being chased by the school guards. Spud succeeds in making Amanda jealous with a girl named Christine. Amanda writes a letter to Spud accusing him of being false and treating her badly. Gecko listens to Spud's relationship problems and offers him advice about the way forward. Out of the blue, Christine sends Spud a love letter. Things just got a whole lot complicated. Gecko tells Spud to seize the moment and date all of them at once. Spud goes home for the long weekend. Christine phones Spud and invites him to a beach braai. Spud reluctantly agrees. They get drunk and end up kissing each other at the party. Spud regrets it the next day and tells Christine over the phone that things are over between them and that he doesn't want to be with her. She cries and hangs up the phone. Spud decides that he is in love with Amanda and writes her a letter. He returns back to school at the end of a long weekend. Spud has his hair permed in preparation for Oliver. The boys at the school make fun of him. Spud receives a letter from Mermaid and is nervous that she might be coming back soon. September 1990 Gecko joined the play by becoming assistant stage manager to keep an eye on the girls. He told Spud to stay clear of Christine because she's a bit crazy. The girls from the Oliver cast join the boys at school for a few days. Bogo reveals to Spud that a boy named Emberton and Amanda have been together for at least a year. Spud is in disbelief, but then he sees them holding hands later. He is distraught and heartbroken. Christine kisses him again and he realizes he doesn't like her at all. Spud receives a phone call from his mother who tells him that Wombat has had a stroke and that things don't look good. Spud is relieved his parents are okay. Wombat appears to be getting better, which makes Spud's dad highly upset. Amanda broke up with Emberton and Spud is so excited about it that he invites her to the political society meeting. Amanda makes a good impression on the members and they invite her back. Spud walks her back to her room and she kisses him. It is the first night of the play. Spud is ready to perform. Before he knows it, the play is over. Spud and Amanda kiss again. Amanda tells Spud that they will never be boyfriend and girlfriend and leaves him wondering why. It is the final show and Spud's parents as well as Mermaid come to watch the show. Spud does his best and impresses everyone. Spud realizes he still has feelings for Mermaid. Amanda sees Mermaid fussing over Spud and demands to know who she is once Mermaid leaves. Spud is a coward and tells her that Mermaid is his ex-girlfriend. Gecko is in the sanatorium for food poisoning. He tells Spud that he kissed Christine. They make plans to see each other in the holidays. Spud goes home for the holidays and is excited to see Mermaid. His dad buys him a Labrador puppy named Blackie, which goes missing after being shouted at by Spud's mom. Mermaid helps Spud look for the puppy. They found Blackie and brought him back home. Spud feels guilty for not telling Mermaid about Amanda. He feels peaceful and happy to be at home. October 1990. Gecko invites Spud to join him at Christine's party. Christine lures Spud into her room and kisses him. He runs away and leaves the party. He feels bad for not telling Gecko what happened with Christine. Spud spends a lot of time with Mermaid. They kiss and hold hands. Wombat is getting married to a nutty old man that she met. She refuses to listen to reason. Later, the wedding is called off because the man is already married. Spud returns to school once again. Earthworm has quit the first team, cricket, to focus on his studies. 
Spud is concerned because he looks unhealthy and thin. Amanda sends Spud a letter confessing that she misses him. Spud is so confused about what he wants and does not know what to do. Spud gets bullied by Pike. Pike cuts him with a knife and runs away after Spud screams. The boys go on another night swim. This time there is no trouble. The gov and his wife fight again and she leaves him. The crazy ape sees MacArthur and are freaked out. Spud and Gecko explore the nearby forest and spend the afternoon having fun together. Vern punched Pike until he was unconscious. Spud bought him a hot dog to congratulate him. Someone stole the TV from the boys' boarding house. Latuli is very upset. Sparib and the prefects are investigating the matter. November 1990. The TV was back. It was taken by the assistant maintenance officer of the school. Amanda invites Spud to her school's year-end dance. He feels guilty but agrees to go. It is prize-giving and Spud's entire family attends. Wombat embarrasses Spud. Spud wins two prizes, for English and History, as well as the award for Best Performance by a New Actor. Latuli has been elected as the head boy for next year. Gecko is flying to Mozambique where he will meet his parents. Spud says farewell to him. The Miltons make their way to Durban for the weekend. Spud spends time visiting Mermaid and they enjoy each other's company. Mermaid has asked Spud to spend Christmas with her and her family in Cape Town. She gave him a silver ring as a sign of her commitment. This makes Spud feel awfully guilty. Spud returns to school and feels stressed about the upcoming exams. Spud attends the St. Catherine's year-end dance with Amanda. They kiss. Amanda tells Spud this is the last time they will see each other. Spud wakes up to a scream. The boys in his dorm discover Gecko fevering in his bed, drenched with sweat. They rush Gecko to the sanatorium just to have the sister diagnose him with flu and send him back to the dormitory. An hour later, the boys are woken up to more screams. Gecko looks worse than before and his nose is bleeding. The boys rush him back to the sanatorium and his ear begins to bleed. Gecko is rushed off to the hospital. Gecko is diagnosed with cerebral malaria and is not doing well. His condition is deteriorating. He asks to see Spud. Sparib takes Spud to the hospital to see Gecko. Spud stays with Gecko all night and sings him Amazing Grace. Gecko's parents arrive at the hospital and Spud heads off back to the school. Sparib reveals that bone cancer was the reason for his deformed looking shoulder area, not a lion. Latuli wakes Spud up to inform him that Gecko has died. Spud is devastated and in disbelief. Spud is unable to concentrate and believes that he has failed all his exams. He attends and sings at Gecko's funeral. The Matrix finish their last exam and leave the school property. Spud says goodbye to Earthworm. The Gov tells Spud that he is like a son to him. The now Crazy Seven go on their last night swim for the year. December 1990 Everyone leaves the school to go home for the holidays. Spud climbs up to Hal's view where him and Gecko would always hang out together. He remembers Mr. Crisper's words and ponders about his life. He sees his father's station wagon approaching the school and heads off to meet him. That is the way the novel Spud ends. I hope this has helped you recap all the events that took place in the novel and that you are now prepared for your tests and exams.